College Basketball on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. Basketball on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. By Hot Pocket Snack Bites. A bite-sized snack that bites hunger back. And by the U.S. Virgin Islands is not just a vacation. It's Virgin Islands nice. Learn more at visitusvi.com. The beautiful scenery outside and then inside, well, we got some nice basketball on tap. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane at 4-0. The South Carolina Gamecocks at 4-0. Let's take a look at the starting lineups, and we have one surprise for Tulsa, actually. Kajon Brown, number 13, who has played all of 11 minutes in the first four games, gets into the starting lineup for Frank Haith, Kevin. And Brown has not scored yet this season, so we'll see how that develops in South Carolina Gamecocks going with their usual five. And for South Carolina, Hakevich's Carrera, Kaichen, it's those three seniors accounted for 52 of the 94 points in the victory over Hofstra to get to this title game. Frank Haight, second year as the head coach of Tulsa. He went against Frank Martin when he was in the SEC last couple of years there when they made the transition to the SEC. Frank Haight now 27 and 10 as the head man at Tulsa. A couple NCAA appearances at Missouri and one at Miami. And there's a Miami guy, Frank Martin, fourth season there, 49 and 54. You know his work from Kansas State, four NCAA appearances there, and trying to get South Carolina to its first NCAA appearance since 2004. So looking in on this matchup, Kevin, South Carolina, Tulsa, what are some of the keys to look out for? You got team speed by Tulsa, but Carolina has been relentless on the glass. They were averaging 18 offensive boards per game, and Frank Martin tells you our culture is we are going to make you play left-handed, and we're going to attack the glass and get points in the paint. Prior to tonight, these two teams had never met, and they meet here in the Virgin Islands for the championship for the Paradise Jam, along with Kevin Lehman, Danny Lee with you, Monica Jonigan on the sidelines. Kajon Brown getting the surprise start for Frank Haith here today, and he gets it in the corner off the feed from Shaquille Harrison. On the wing, the three from DeAndre Wright, no. And the first possession of the game for South Carolina. Here's P.J. Dozier, McDonald's All-American, the freshman underneath. Hakevich just the jump hook. Kevin, he had a big second half yesterday in the victory over Hofstra, and Frank Martin was really excited about his production. Hakevich just struggled in the first game, answered the bell second half yesterday, and he can carry, continues to carry it on. You can see his great confidence, and his coach has confidence in him. Rashad Smith denied, and out of the fray comes Dozier from Columbia, South Carolina. Gives up the Hakevichis, rolls it around to Carrera. We highlighted him, 17 points yesterday, doing a lot of the work inside. Well, Carrera was a four-man through his first three years in the program. Now he's moving to that three position, their best rebounder. Hakevichis can't get it to go. Kaichin has tried to grab the rebound. Instead, it's South Carolina. Or, or Tulsa's Rashad Smith, the fifth year senior, coming out with the possession. Now, here's the matchup to watch P.J. Dozier on Harrison, the freshman on the senior. Woodard loses possession. South Carolina grabs it back, already leading 2 0 over Tulsa. There's a Kevichis to Carrera coming in with a 9.6 rebound per game average. And Frank Martin talking a lot about that senior trio. They themselves not getting much leadership as freshmen, but doing a lot of the leading as seniors in the corner. Kaichinis 
It rattles out. No good. And there's Carrera just as we talked about, putting it back up. But it's Kaichen is tapping it in. If you're going to compete with Carolina, you have to get them off the glass. They're relentless on the backboards. Kaichen has set a career high with 23 in the opening win against DePaul in this tournament, then came back with 18 yesterday. Down the lane comes Rashawn Smith, and he rolls it through. One okay. of the nine seniors on the roster. Good sign for Tulsa. They need some scoring from their front line. Thornwell rises and buries a three, and as we've been talking about all weekend long, Frank Martin says the success of South Carolina predicated on his shooting. Oh, a rejection. Hakevich just denies Harrison. Harrison has a mid-range game now. He hasn't made a lot of threes, just two in this season. He's going to try and drive to the basket. But Kevin just great timing. Shaquille Harrison, player of the week in the American, 97 points through four games, most since Willie Biles at 123 to start the season in the 72-73 campaign. Danny, we've watched number 15 there in white. P. Jay Dozier grew up in front of our eyes. Excellent defensive game against Green last night. Gatorade South Carolina player of the year at Spring Valley High School. South Carolina grabbing it back. Already with a quick 9-2 lead. Tychen is eyeing the three. Instead, it's Thornwell. And he buries his first two three-point shots. And South Carolina off to a quick start with a 12-2 lead. And we'll take a timeout, 16.45 to go in the first period. And South Carolina knocking them down with great aplomb, up by 10. From outside the arc, he's knocked down his first two to build up his 10-point lead. I want Frank Carolina. Hayes was the head coach of Missouri. He won all three meetings with Frank Martin for moving on to Tulsa. And Tulsa will give it away without a shot. Giving it right back after the Rashad Smith giveaway. Well, if you have to match the energy level of South Carolina, the intensity on the glass you cannot finesse this team. Tychinus gets over half court to Hakevichis. Dozier to Thornwell. Thornwell down the lane, runs into defender. And Tulsa will take it back as DeAndre Wright takes one for the team. Excellent defense by Wright. Held his ground, didn't leave his feet. Took the blow and the charge. Well, one of the key stats that concerns a lot of the opposition so far for Tulsa, nine seniors. Only Valparaiso returns more percentage of points and minutes from last year's team. This team returned almost 99% scoring in minutes from a year ago, Kevin. Now watch this matchup with Dozier. He's six foot seven with long arms, a point guard, number 15 with a ball in his hands. Woodard, the three rattles out, and it's still a 10-point lead for the Gamecocks, trying to become the third SEC team to win the Paradise Jam. Zone by Tulsa, and I'll be a soft spot in the middle. Carolina has success against Hofstra's zone. Six on the shot clock for Thornwell on the move against Smith. Cross court heave. It finds Pereira. One on the shot clock. Gets it up in time, but it does not hit the rim. And it will go back to Tulsa after the timeout. 15 31 to go. Slow start for Frank Hayes' team. Tulsa down by 10. Frank Mark's team shooting well at the start.
the foul is on the ground, but they will keep possession. As Markel Curtis is on the floor, we notice that Rashad Ray did not start in this game, Kevin. Starting Kajon Brown instead, and Curtis, first guy off the bench for Frank Hayes. Curtis part of that bench mob that had 37 points in Tulsa's win over then ranked number nine Wichita State. Turnover for Rashad Smith and Thornwell has it up the floor. Kaichen is near side. Head fake Dwayne Notice on the floor. Leading returning score from a year ago. Also Marcus Stroman. Stroman is giving some excellent minutes off the bench for South Carolina. And Notice we know is a score as he started 33 games last year. Good defense from Woodard, who was the Conference Player of the Week the first week. There's the guy, the reigning Conference Player of the Week, and Harrison can't get it to go. Smith grabs the rebound, goes back up, and that won't go, but there's DeAndre Wright trailing and hammering it home. Well, one of the keys scoring from the front line of Tulsa. You know, like that of DeAndre Wright coming with the flush and the putback. Ending a three-minute-plus scoring drought in the process. South Carolina by eight. Thornwell drops it off. Chris Silva onto the floor, can't get it to go. Rebound taken by Wright, and here comes Tulsa. Whirlwind week this past week. Smith, nice pass to Curtis. Stroman up ahead to notice. Here come the Gamecocks. Full court surge, and Curtis has it back. Stroman has it. Live ball, who wants it? It's Harrison, two on one. Harrison to the hoop. Curtis has it, puts it up, can't get it to go, but Tulsa will get free throws. There's some wild action on the floor. Tulsa trying to match the energy level of the Gamecocks, and they have, after a slow start, their energy went up another notch, but watch. Watch this come in from outside. Timed it beautifully. DeAndre Wright punches it home. Well, we talked throughout the week about the whirlwind as we got a number of substitutions. This past week for Tulsa, Tuesday night, upsetting the number nine team in the nation, Wichita State at home, storming the floor, coming to the Paradise Jam, falling down by 19 on Friday night, rattling second biggest deficit overcome in school history. Then yesterday, they took on Indiana State, down nine late, came back and won that game, and now in the championship game against South Carolina as Curtis hits the free throw. Well, you talk about them, the oldest team in America, the Tulsa Hurricane. They have great depth, hard to rattle a team with nine seniors. And this is a group that stuck together when the coaching change came after their sophomore year. Yeah, we mentioned Rashad Smith and Brandon Swanigan playing from three coaches. Swanigan defending the ball, Kaich or Hakevichis coming up well short. And there's Woodard off with the rebound around the Swanigan screen behind the foul line. He drills it. Woodard and Harrison are dynamic offensive players. Then notice on the other end draws the foul against Woodard, so he'll get two shots. The referees, Brian Kersey, Les Jones, and Justin Porterfield. A Woodard, a little crossover. Look at that screen that notice runs into. And Mid-range jumpers, a lost art hmm. in the college basketball game. We have two players that excel at that in Shaquille Harrison and James Woodard. Dwayne notice to the line, 10 for 11 at the line this season. Can't get it to go. Averaging 12 and a half points per game. Coming off the bench this season after being a starter a year ago. Woodard comes out and Kajon Brown, the freshman from Harvey, Louisiana, back on. Rashad Ray, who did not get the start in the lineup. And Frank Hay talked to us about his spread offense. You're going to see dribble drive and kick. They will try to turn the corner and go downhill. 10-point lead for South Carolina, down to five. Rashad Ray, who did not start, gets his first action here. Misses the jumper. On the run is noticed. Swanigan blocks it, then steps over him, no less. And a foul is going to be called. Now, Tulsa has excellent team speed. You can see this here as they recover in transition. The black jerseys, these guys can run, and they want to get this open court going to their offensive end, where Harrison and Woodard excel. Dwayne Notice from Woodbridge, Ontario, Canada. Puts in the free throw. As mentioned, 12 points per game 
Last season, 20 times in double figures, 320 point or more games a year ago for Frank Martin's team. He's got three, and it's back to a seven point lead for South Carolina. No rest for the weary. Shaq Harrison onto the floor, scoreless at this point. He's five away from 1,100 points at Tulsa. Now Frank Martin told us he did not want to play much zone against this Tulsa team, but he has gone to it here early in the first half. Sean Ray getting out of trouble, Curtis. Pat Burt now onto the floor. Harrison, nice shovel past the Swanigan. And that's why I don't want to play zone, because you've got experienced players. They put Shaq Harris, Harrison in the middle, makes the catch and delivers the dime. Swanigan having his hands full 6'9", 209 with a 6'9", 296, Eric Kahn. Two fouls against Swanigan. Eric Kahn, just a freshman, but excellent footwork. Well, look at this pass by Shaq Harrison. If you got a guy that can go to the middle of that zone defense and make plays with his back to the basket, difficult to defend. Hakevich is the long range three. The big man steps out and drills it. Three of six on the season from distance. Took his time just like it was a horse shot in the driveway. Here's Burt. You see Harrison work in the middle of the zone. Turnover for Tulsa with 12 minutes to play. You've got a great passer in the interior of the zone offense with shooters around you. That's why Frank Martin did not want a zone. We'll see how long he stays in this. And Kevin, not only the sheer number of seniors for Tulsa, just across the line, the Kevichis, but also the depth. Before yesterday's win against Indiana State, they had been averaging 33 points per game off the bench. Only 16 yesterday because the starters did so well. Cobb underneath, good feed from Carrera. So Carrera finds the seam. We highlighted that young man, Carrera. Love his game. South Carolina doubling up Tulsa now 20 to 10. This brings a toughness to a team Bird that against, is known for toughness. Against the zone, Harrison inside on Cobb. Outside, he goes to Ray, no good, and the rebound pulled down by Cobb. See how Harrison can find the open man from the interior of the zone offense. That a missed shot, but a great opportunity. And a couple of big bodies. To, South Carolina right now causing mismatches for Tulsa. There's Hakevichis! Look out below! Hey, what's good for the goose, good for the gander as Carolina uses the same offensive set. Strowman in the middle of the zone makes it great pass. Ray zooms underneath, gets it to Wright who hands it off back to Ray. Tulsa ball, Harrison under pressure. And another travel for Tulsa. Burke gives it away. But Kevin, it's the Lithuanian, Limonis Hakevichis, doing the damage on the offensive end.
to 10. St. Thomas the site, South Carolina in the lead. Remember the Doug Gottlieb show is fast paced and always opinionated. Get to know Gottlieb face to face. The new Doug Gottlieb show Wednesday at 3 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. The 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Nels Hawkinson, executive director of fun, <laughs> also the executive director of basketball travelers, which created this Paradise Jam tournament 16 years ago for the women, 15 years ago now for the men, and he's also the brains behind that beach zone setting that we have on the southern end here inside the University of Virgin Islands Sports and Fitness Center. Kevin, the Golden Hurricane in danger of being downgraded to a tropical storm, shooting only 23 and a half percent. Frank Martin forces you to do what you don't want to do. Both teams shoot it well from the three-point line. Carolina, three for three from the arc for a team that shoots 40% on the year. Three on the shot clock for P.J. Dozier. Does he realize it? One, and he doesn't get it off in time. And that's one of those turnovers Frank Martin does not like. Yep, there it is. One of the many looks that you'll see. It looks like he just stuck that screwdriver in the outlet. Yeah, that's what a he, euphemism. he used at practice one day. Said it hurt like hell. Didn't have to teach him not to do it again. Somehow that was a teaching point to his freshman. <laughs> Tulsa, I don't, shouldn't have to tell you twice. Tulsa down 12. Woodard loses the handle on it now. Six on the clock for Tulsa. Four now. Three. Woodard steps back under good pressure from Carrera. Wow, what defense from the senior. Well, the intensity level by South Carolina at the defensive end has got Tulsa on their heels. Two top scorers for Tulsa, Harrison and Woodard now a combined one of eight. Kaichen is back in for South Carolina. Now, Tulsa cannot get this into an open court game. They want some open space. If they have to play against a set defense, they're going to struggle in this game. P.J. Dozier at the controls. Columbia, South Carolina freshman. Kaichenis, defense by right. And the zone almost makes this a more patient game for South Carolina. Carrera having a nice tournament. Frank Martin loving the passion and emotion that he brings. His strength can get in the way at times, but it has fueled him here in the Virgin Islands. And when you make shots, it allows you to set your defense. And the Gamecocks defense, when it's set, it is very difficult to score against. Up top is Sterling Taplin, the freshman, not on the shot clock again. Tulsa has to rush it. Inside, Smith, nice move. Banks it home and draws the foul. Well, that's what you have to do with Smith, just to drive it to the paint. Great contact, Will, the ball through the hoop. Foul goes against Carrera for his first, and to the line goes Rashad Smith, who is just 0 for 1 from the line this season. Fifth year senior from Plano, Texas. One of the guys, along with Brandon Swanigan, who's played for three coaches. Started with Doug Wojcik, then Danny Manning, now with Frank Haith the last couple of years. Hakevichis rolls it around to Carrera in the corner, Dozier. Mid post jump hook, nicely done for Hakevichis, who has nine points on four of six shooting. Oh, Monas has been excellent working the interior of the zone. On the wing is Harrison, still looking for his first points, 0 for 4 to start. On the move, Taplin too hard on the shot. Akevichis seals the rebound. Here's Dozier looking down the floor. Herrera rolls it around to Dozier. Over right for three. Oh, and he sinks that one as well. The freshman came up limping after that three ball out of the corner pocket. Harrison into the lane and fouled going up. And Carrera teaching Hakevich, as we talked about the seniors teaching the freshmen. This time, it's a senior teaching a senior. Dozier a little slow to get up. South Carolina may have learned something from Hofstra, not normally a three-point shooting team, but four of four from distance, and they've rocketed out.
Emmanuel Ezechinanso right there. Up before our eyes through this tournament, he's gotten better each and every game. Six foot seven point guard. The point of Frank Martin's defense with that length and wingspan is very disruptive. And you can see him back trying to walk it off behind the bleachers. And yeah, PJ's dad, Perry, played at South Carolina. His uncle Terry played there. His sister Asia's on the women's team. But he's out for now. Thornwell back in and free throws now. Harrison gets his first point of the game. And Frank Martin put Dozier on Wanya Green yesterday after he had 22 in the first half, held him to seven in the second half. And He's also matched up on Shaq Harrison. See the score output that he has done so far this weekend, and they're actually pushing Tulsa's bench back a little bit. They were right up on the line, but too little too late as far as P.J. Dozier is concerned. Back to the line goes Shaquille Harrison. And well, the Tulsa, they've had that adversity all weekend long, Kevin. Trailed 19, came back, trailed nine yesterday, came back now trying to rally from 17 down. The two free throws make it a 29-14 game. They've gotten out of the zone, gone man to man. Thornwell off the mark. Here well, comes Harrison. Tulsa so dangerous. Their best rebounders are Harrison and Woodard, so they will get the rebound and start to break themselves. Down the lane comes Markel Curtis, and it's a lid on the hoop for Tulsa. Rolls out to Kaichinis. Carrera against Harrison. Working for position in the post, Burt caught up with Kaichinis, and he'll be whistled for his first foul. At the same time that Marcus Stroman comes in for Carrera. Kaichinis is a matchup nightmare because if he has a smaller man, he'll go with the block like he did there. A bigger person to fit him, he can step out to the three-point line. Bullying his way inside Hakevich's, but DeAndre Wright holds tough. Missed shot, here comes Harrison weaving through traffic. You can see how Harrison can get the rebound, immediately start the break. And Frank Martin, he's talking to his team, he's got to stop Harrison from going downhill. Excellent speed, has a long stride. We talked about this young man Number three on your screen there in black for Tulsa. Under-recruited. Yeah. She recruited as a football player. He came out of Kansas City. Kansas offered him a scholarship, Wyoming, some D2 schools, but only Tulsa offered him for basketball. By the way, Tulsa's got six turnovers. They've only made five shots. Probably the number one point of emphasis right now for Frank Hayes. Here comes Notice down the lane. He runs into right, and this time right's going to be called for a block. Notice. And you can see the heel is on that extended arc that's out a foot farther this season. Therefore, it is a block call. It puts Dwayne Notice at the free throw line. All three of Notice's points have come from the foul line. You see the two lines there in the outer one. The orange arc line is the same as the NBA this season. It's been moved out 12 inches to eliminate collisions at the basket. A huge advantage for the offense. And if you're wondering why there's another one, the women's game, they still play with the three-foot arc. By the way, update, sprain right ankle for P.J. Dozier, but he is expected to return to the ball game. Carolina by 16. Well, if you're playing for Frank Martin, you're going to rub a little dirt on it and get back into play. Water lane, Burt goes up on Kaichinis. Rebound grab by Cobb. Under 25% shooting for Tulsa at this point. Shot no good for Thornwell. Burt the rebound. Harrison, oh, what a crossover. Cross-court pass, far side, Woodard. Senior teammate can't get it to go, and the struggles from the floor continue for the Golden Hurricane. Stroman works it inside to Cobb against Wright. The reverse not there, and Wright can't hang on to the rebound. Well, Shaquille Harris is that point forward as he can start the break, get inside the defense, and make 
the pass is to the perimeter. But Tulsa, they got to start knocking down some shots. 5 of 22, which is just under 23% at this point. Now, Carolina has been very aggressive with their defense, but Tulsa has had some excellent opportunities that have not gone through the net. Strowman throws it away. Now, as we talked about yesterday uh, with the late game, we saw Hofstra get off to a slow start in the consolation game to start, but Tulsa played the earlier game yesterday. South Carolina played in the late game that finished at 12.30 a.m., and they're shooting 55%. And Frank Martin, another coach who did not have his team leave the hotel today, they met in a meeting room, watched a little tape, did the walkthrough, try to keep them off their legs. Left Third of the game lane. in four days. Left of the lane was Harrison. And a foul call. Uh, the originator of the shoot-around was actually Bill Sharman from the Lakers of the 70s, and actually Wilt Chamberlain was one who was never fond of it, and he never got up for him. Well, it kept Wilt Chamberlain in at night. That's one of the reasons why Sharman started that <laughs> shoot-around, to keep Wilt to still to get into bed earlier. Well, if you believe the stories, Wilt Chamberlain wasn't in bed that early. Shot good for Burt, and that's his first two of the contest. So let's see if Tulsa can start putting together some offense. Well, Burt, none of those guys that can score off the bench for Tulsa. But Tulsa has to make some stops at the defensive end. And Notice throws it right through the wickets of his big man, Akevichis, and it's back into the possession of Tulsa. Golden Hurricane with Burt Harrison, Rashad Smith, Markel Curtis, and James Woodard as the five on the floor. Just over five minutes to play in the first half. Danny Lee, Kevin Lehman, Monica Jonigan with you. Paradise Jam Championship game. Harrison blocked the tandem of Cobb and Hakevichis with the denial. Notice down the lane. No. Rebound taken by Burt. Curtis over Thornwell won't go, and Cobb seals off the rebound there. Well, Tulsa's got the ball to the rim, but they have not been able to finish. Big bodies. Stepping in the passing lane, James Woodard, and he's frustrated, fouled by Thornwell, his second foul. And that's one of those fouls where if this were the NBA, you would see the clear path foul, but that does not exist in college basketball. P.J. Dozier had the sprained right ankle, good sign for South Carolina. He's back out on the floor. You can see the production early as it's now a one-and-one -one situation for Tulsa. Woodard 18-22 at, at the line this season. Tulsa just 25% from the floor, 6 of 24 for South Carolina. Over 50%, they're 11 of 21. James Woodard, 17 points per game, has three. 1,474 in his career. He is now in the top 10. He just passed Willie Biles for 10th place. And Tulsa all-time scoring annals. Here's Marcus Stroman onto the floor, Hakevichis, Carrera, Kaichinis, and in the corner, Dozier for South Carolina. Dozier rises from three, well off the mark. Both squads have changed up their defense, trying to keep the other off balance. That's what Shaq Harrison does. He's got that hesitation move, can draw contact. He's going to make a lot of trips to the free throw line. Stroman whistled for the foul, and now Tulsa will be tested on their free throw shooting prowess. If you watched the game yesterday against Hofstra, it wasn't a pretty one. They were 19 of 36 foul shooting, coming only at 68%. Harrison's been to the free throw line, coming into this game 46 times in just four contests. It's that ability now with these new rules that he can hesitate, explode, it's difficult to keep your hands off. Harrison knocks them both down. Type of player that these new rules really benefit. We talked about putting 10 pounds of muscle on. He averaged 14 points a game a year ago. He's averaging 27 in this tournament. Five straight for Tulsa to pull to within 11 points. 
Well, as we talked about in the first game, you've got to get this down to a manageable number. Get it to single digits before you go in at halftime. South Carolina has missed its last six shots and three turnovers in the last two minutes and 45 seconds. Carrera, seven on the shot clock for Dozier. Baseline, Hakevich, as you realize it, one on the shot clock. Dozier just gets it up in time off the back rim, and Burt reels in the rebound. Well, Tulsa does not double the post. Hakevich just has to score that basket. Woodard drills the three-point shot. And now it's just an eight-point game, and South Carolina losing it out of bounds. So it's rally time once again for Tulsa. 8-0 run, and that's Frank Martin defined. An angry man right now as the lead just cut in half. 3.19 to go. world in offensive rebounds and this season they've got 72 offensive rebounds to their opponents 32 wow. only three tonight so Tulsa has done a superb job of keeping South Carolina from the offensive glass and Frank Martin's been on his big man to try and increase those rebounding numbers Burt getting inside the lane Carrera goes down and it's going to be an offensive foul against Burt for a second actually now his third foul well that's impressive because it is difficult to get the charge foul with the new rule changes and that arc moved out. But Carrera in there early. Dozier bringing up the ball. Six and a half points per game coming in. Uh, he has already scored five points here tonight and has done the job on the glass as well. Carrera with possession. Two piece line. Rashad Smith denying Hakevichis. It will stay with South Carolina. Gamecocks coming in, 84 and a half points per game, seeking their first NCAA appearance in quite some time. They were actually picked to finish seventh best since the SEC combined divisions. The last NCAA appearance was 04. Herrera laying it in. He's got six. Excellent out of bounds play by Frank Martin's team against the zone of Tulsa. Ten point game, double figures for much of the half for South Carolina. Up into that recent run from the Golden Hurricane. Here's Wright rolling it along to Curtis. Smith on the move against Kaichinis. Smith, Rashad, or, uh, DeAndre Wright steps out, three-pointer not there. And it is Rashad Smith with the rebound. 
Cross court pass in amongst the trees. And Woodard up for the challenge. He with eight points now. Well, that's what Woodard and Harrison do. Ball fake, and they get it to the rim. Kaichinis, they're coming in at 15 points per game to lead South Carolina. Gets the three-point shot for five points. Kaichinis has been fairly quiet this first half offensively for South Carolina. Big three ball. Gamecock shooting 52% underneath. Three-point play opportunity as DeAndre Wright working his magic yet again. Well, again, a key for Tulsa. Get the big men involved. Right with a great spin move and footwork. Watch the big man show his nimble toes. That's a tough move without traveling. Split the defenders after the spin. The peripatetic DeAndre Wright, his dad served in the military, his dad Donald. He lived in Europe for many years as a kid. Senior from Lawton, Oklahoma, 6'9", 245. Four for eight from the line this season. Free throw no good, and Carrera snares the rebound. Dozier drops it off to Kaichinis. Defense, and it's Swanigan right off the bench. Spent a lot of the time on the bench in this first half, and he's going to go right back there with his third foul. Or actually, no, they're surprisingly going to give it to Harrison, and Harrison's looking on saying, what did I do? Well, I can see thanks. Thank God it's not me. <laughs> His second foul, though. And Kaijin is to the line where he's 17 to 24 this year. So Swanigan does come out regardless, and Kajon Brown back in. And every time Tulsa makes a run, this guy at the free throw line. And Doggis has the answer. Hit the big three earlier and now at the free throw line. Six points for Kaisen as he and Limona Takevich is introduced to the college game. Their club coach, Marius Tomalis, actually coached at Daytona State College in Florida before going back to Lithuania and really sold him on playing college basketball. A big reason why both of them are here. And there's Frank Martin. Not a happy man again as there's a foul out on the perimeter and it's Dozier's first. Once again, we talked about Shaquille Harrison with that long stride. He gets in the gap and back at the free throw line again. Next point for Harrison will be point number 1100. Great jinx there, Danny. <laughs> Shot Smith not happy. He goes to the sideline. And surprisingly, Shaq Harrison, not a great free throw shooter. On 58% range. So Harrison with 1,100 points, 194 steals, sixth all time, 338 assists, fourth all time in the Tulsa record books coming into the game. The nine point lead for South Carolina, it's been as high as 17 tonight. I was going to say, Tulsa got it down to single digits. Now, this is a big defensive stand. They want to keep it there going into halftime. But Carrera has an answer of his own. Under a minute to go. South Carolina back up by double figures in the Paradise Jam Championship Contest. Rashad Ray dumps it off to Brown. Curtis flips it off to Woodard. Woodard into the lane. No, and the rebound tapped to Carrera. Gamecocks will slow down the pace, about seven seconds separating the shot clock and the game clock. And a timeout will be utilized by Frank Martin. Remember, you have to use one of them. You can't carry all three 30-second timeouts over. They'll take a timeout. South Carolina by 11 over Frank Hayes, Tulsa Golden Hurricane.
CBS Sports Network. Y'all wish you happy holiday season coming up. South Carolina would like to kick off their season with a victory in the Paradise Gem to go to 5-0. and Haven't been 5-0 and since the 2004-2005 season. Best ever start in program history without a loss was 0-3-0-4. Meanwhile, Tulsa is 4-0 for the first time since 2009-2010. Their best ever start, 15-0 in 83-84. And Frankie Haith sat down Shaquille Harrison here the rest half as he has two fouls. Yeah, Harrison five points has not made a shot. All five points coming at the line. Kevichus with two fouls for Carolina. He has a seat on the bench also. Notice around the screen from Kaichen. It's the long three, short. Rebound, Carrera. Six seconds to go. Carrera running into right, puts it up. No. Right grabs it one second ago. And a foul in the backcourt. Is that right? Don't ask Frank Martin what he thinks. Boy, a foul 94 feet away from the opposing baseline. That is not a good foul for South Carolina. It's a double bonus, so two shots. Kevin for DeAndre Wright. Soft touch. So this could bring it to single figures. Five points for Wright tonight. And Frank trying to do the stare down. He's trying to stare this ball out of the basket. It worked the first trip. Death stare doesn't work there. 38-29, one second to go. Notice from 40 feet, just short. And that's how the first half ends. Carolina had a 17 point lead over Tulsa, but Frank Hayes team, they've been up for the challenge, the rallying. 19 on Friday, 9 yesterday, and trailing by 17, just about cutting this one into half, at the half, and Monica Jonigan standing by with Frank Martin. Coach Martin, I know you didn't like that foul all the way away from the sand of the floor, but your team is sharing the ball really well. Point spread, nobody really in double figures. Is that your strategy coming in to try to get this team uh, early on? Too many turnovers against the zone. I mean, you know, I got a point guard that doesn't doesn't get us in any offense and then throws the ball out of bounds back-to-back -back possessions. We, we got to be better in that. And there at the end, we're trying to run and ex execute a play. My senior doesn't know what to run. Uh, you know, that, that's inexcusable. When you talk about your seniors uh, stepping up in leadership roles, what are you expecting from them versus what they're giving you so far in this first half? Well, we got we got to a hotel after one o'clock in the morning last night. So my guys were a little tired. We had a hard game. I'm happy we got a lead. I just hope that our seniors do what they've done this whole preseason and hold us together here so we can figure out 20 more minutes. Thanks, Coach. Good yeah. luck in the second half. Guys, back to you. Well, Kevin, listening to Frank Mark, you wouldn't know his team is leading at the halftime mark. Oh, made a good point. This is a late night for his squad. And they've been able to build a nine-point lead here. Well, South Carolina got off to a quick start, shooting 50% through 20 minutes, leading by nine at the half, 18 at the half, coming up next from St. Thomas.
Carolina, but he gets his socks in the box, puts his defender on an island and scores with that hook. Shows his range with the three ball. And now a little action on the baseline by number 14. Little hook over the left shoulder. What a skill set for Kevichis. At the other end, it's Woodard, mid-range jumper. And he's got to pick up the slack as Harrison has not scored from the field. Corner pocket. And again, it does best. Get to the rack and finish James Woodard with eight for Tulsa. Well, and just like we saw in the Hofstra game with uh, Wanye Green, did not score in the first half and then came back with an 18-point second half. Shaquille Harrison, player of the week in the American, did not get a field goal in the first half. He did have five points. Let's see what he can do now in the second half. When Dozier is locked onto him, Dozier, we'll see how his ankle injury affects his ability to defend Shaq Harris. Foul on Rashad Smith there. This one's tipped up into the air. And who wants it? It's taken by Markel Curtis. There goes Rashad to the hoop. And it's back to South Carolina. Markel Curtis starting the half. Kajon Brown started at that other guard spot in place of Rashad Ray today. Frank Eight making one change of the substance, the lineup that he had the first four games. Carrera on the baseline, able to notch the jumper. He's got a total of eight points. Carrera, the young man, and we highlighted one of the three seniors for Frank Martin. Boy, impressed by that young man, number 40. Wright has been very aggressive. South Carolina with five players scoring at least five points. They do have the balance. Or in this game, South Carolina was the aggressor, and you have to match their intensity. Tulsa, after a slow start, has done that late in the first half. Tulsa team. As Carrera rises and drills the three-pointer. So Carrera with five straight points for South Carolina. He's now the first Gamecock into double figures. Harrison skips it to Rashad Smith on the baseline. DeAndre Wright, mid-range jumper not there. Kaichinus pulls it down. And here comes P.J. Dozier ahead to Thornwell. Well, Frank Martin talked about Carrera being the heart and soul of this Gamecock team. Finds Dozier on the wing, and he nails a three-point shot. Well, again, I love this young man's game. Just a freshman, number 15, Dozier. Great defender. He's got some range on the jump shot also. South Carolina, 6 of 10 from three-point range. They're back up by 15. Markel Curtis matches, though, for Tulsa. Well, excellent ball movement after they trapped Harrison to get the ball of his hands. Tulsa moves it inside out. In the lane, Kaichinis the jump hook. And they're exchanging blows right now as he's now up to eight. Well, again, Kaichinis, a tough matchup for anyone. Very efficient three of four from the floor for Kaichinis, who's had a nice weekend here in the Virgin Islands. Right off the front rim, no, but there's Woodard showing the athleticism. Backs it out to Curtis. That's short. Dozier up ahead. Thornwell against Harrison. And Thornwell scoops it over the front. And smart move by Harrison. He has two fouls. Got out of the way, so he didn't pick up the third. And there is what Harrison does if he gets going downhill with a head of steam. Draws contact. Trace a foul. A great outlet pass. Now watch what Harrison does here. Gets out of the way. Well, that would have been his third foul. If he would have tried to take the charge call. And P.J. Dozier has often been on a short leash, as we've seen over the last three games. Makes a mistake, found the perimeter, and Frank Martin yanks him immediately and plays the Dwayne Notice. There's Harrison in the hoop, and that's his first field goal of the day. Well, able to turn the corner, Harrison. The Gamecocks have been trying to double him on any ball screens to make him give up the basketball. Thornwell rises from three this time, and it's Markel Curtis. Thornwell shot that one with very poor balance. Curtis takes it the full 94 by 50. And he now has seven coming in, averaging 10 points a game. One of the double figure scorers, along with Pat Burke coming off the bench for Frank Haith in the early goings this season. Well, Danny, small sample size, but we've seen people in transition, players get right to the hoop because of the fear of making contact. 
foul on the rebound. And it's going to cost the possession for South Carolina. Kaichinitz with his second foul. Kaichinitz clearly blocked out in an attempt to go over the back. Thornwell is going to take a seat. It's also in the basketball. They were receiving votes in this year's AP Coaches Poll after stunning Wichita State at home and running the tables of their first four games. Yeah, American Conference with three teams breaking the top 25 today with UConn at 18, Cincy at 24, and SMU at 25. Well, don't forget last year, Tulsa won their first 10 league games. First time they've done that since 1969 last year. Woodard on the wing, knocks down a three-point shot. It's a nine-point game. He got a foul in the front court as action is disrupted again. And it looks like DeAndre Wright is rung up for a second foul. So we'll take a break. Stepping away, it's 50-41. South Carolina by nine. More after this. Inside the arc, get set and take the blow as Wright did on that last attempt. Silva, the freshman, quick trigger as well on the substitution. And Frank Martin's an equal opportunity substitute, or you make a mistake, you find your place on the sideline. And you got to avoid the stare as you go <laughs> out to the pitch. And we talked to the seniors about how the freshmen react to that stare. Out of the corner, three-pointer for Burt. He's been saddled with those three fouls throughout much of the game. Just a six-point lead down from 17 with eight minutes to go in the first half. Akevichis, turnaround jump hook, though. 
Boy, that's excellent balance with the basketball by Hakevichis. And on the other end, Carrera tries to go up to block, but a foul is going to be called. Hakevichis and Carrera each with 11 to pace the game, Cox. 11 for Woodard to lead the Golden Hurricane. Harrison's been making his living at the line today. Only one of five from the floor, but five of six from the foul line. The American Player of the Week, we've mentioned, coming in 97 points through his first four games. He scored at least 20 in each of his first four games, including that 31-point game in the rally effort against Ohio on Friday night. And we haven't seen a guy at Tulsa do that since Willie Biles did it 43 years ago. That many points through four games. Willie had 123 through four games. Gamecocks by six. They've got the ball. Marcus Stroman running the controls. Stroman looking for the entry to Cobb. Instead, he goes to Dwayne Notice. Kaichinis and Carrera round out the five. Notice with 12 in the shot clock. Mid-post jumper just over the arms of Wright. Cobb loses the rebound to Harrison, and there's the athletic Harrison to Curtis. Well, that last possession, there was confusion by South Carolina. They ran their zone offense, although Tulsa was playing man-to-man. -man. Completely out of sync. It led to an easy two points the other end for Tulsa. 14-2 run, just over two minutes in length to make it a four-point game, which was once a 17-point lead for South Carolina. Turnaround jumper, no good for Carrera. Yesterday, Hofstra rallied from 17 down to give South Carolina trouble before the Gamecocks ended up pulling away. Now, right on his way to the hoop, and he draws another foul at the expense of the Gamecocks. Foul called against Eric Cobb. Now, watch this. We talked about open court, how good Tulsa is. Let's see with Harrison in control and Curtis with the finish. Herrera getting an earful on the South Carolina sideline now. Curtis rolls it around to Woodard. Open in the corner is Pat Burt. Junior from Plano, Texas. Transfer from South Plains College can't connect. And Burt may have been surprised how open he was. This fired long. Woodard whistled for the foul. Woodard thought he had a steal on that last one. And that is his second. Wright's going to take a rest. He's really made his presence felt inside. Now Swanigan, not quite as physical. Swanigan, who's had a lot of fouls today. A couple early, which has limited his playing time. Got his career high the other day against Ohio with 16 points. And the foul now against Burt is his fourth. But he's one away from an early exit. And onto the floor comes Rashad Ray. So Burt will come to the sideline. Now in the first half, when Tulsa's zone, Caroline got that easy basket inside on the OB under. Well, considering that Frank Hayes' team has been struggling from the floor, and he hasn't gotten a whole lot from Harrison, Burt in foul trouble. And not as much production from Swan again. They're only down four, Kevin. Well, Curtis with a nice block out, but they called the foul on him, and Frank Haith doesn't understand that call either. Pachinis over the back. Watch this block out. Now well, maybe he was nudging him out, Curtis. Second foul on Markel. Kaichinis in the corner. Looking for the entry. Instead goes the Stroman over to Thornwell. Driving on the defender, the runner from 13, not there, and Eric Cobb goes over the top. To give it right back to Tulsa. Lead down to four with 13-12 to go in the Paradise Jam Championship game. Sundarius so Thornwell had an excellent start to this game, but he has not got a lot done here offensively for the Gamecocks. Harrison. Over on the wing is Curtis. Curtis driving on Kaichin is stripped, taken away by Thornwell. Oh, just say, see that Thornwell makes a huge defensive play. And then on the other end, draws the foul and will go to the line for two shots. Yeah. 
Frank Martin talks about Thornwell being his best defender on the perimeter because of his size and experience. Thornwell at 6'5", the junior, 250 pounds out of Lancaster, South Carolina by way of Oak Hill Academy. Trying to put an end to this 14-2 run. Hits the free throw. He has nine points today. It's his first free throw. Came to the line 73% coming in as we've been talking about. Healthy this year. Knee tendonitis in both knees. Had injections last year. Not too much high impact in between. Didn't miss any of the 33 games a season ago. Was in there throughout. But you wonder, now he's healthy and able to go, how potent he can be. And Frank Martin said as such that the key to this team's success lies with number zero. Well, Thornwell hit early, two early threes to put Carolina up to begin this game, but relatively quiet offensively. He's done an excellent job on the defensive end. 12.40 to play. Harrison spinning his way as he goes. Wow, what an athlete. We mentioned it early and throughout the tournament. And he continues to impress. His ability to draw contact on his drive is just phenomenal. Tough matchup for anyone. Thornwell spinning his way into the paint. It's going to cost Tulsa a foul. Rashad Ray reaches in. Tell you what, Danny, with this rule change, when you do that dribble spin at the top of the key, it's tough to stop. And there's a spin right there by Harrison. I mean, Thornwell basically has to get out of the way. Now Thornwell returns the favor at the offensive end and a trip to the free throw line. Harrison was losing his balance, you saw there, as he went too and still was able to keep his dribble alive and score, no less. Thornwell making his last three at the line. And it's so hard on that spin move for the defender to be set. You see a lot of bailouts on a spin move right below the free throw line. From Darius a couple of years ago as a freshman. Second leading scorer only to Julius Randle among freshmen in the SEC. Swanning and stripped, but a foul is going to be called. And Michael Carrera is not going to like this one at all. What about that look of <laughs> disbelief? Now, Swanigan was open on his dive to the rim because of the attention on Shaquille Harrison. Ball screen. Two defenders stay with him until the ball gets out of his hands. It lets Swanigan dive to the front of the rim. Well, it's one and one. And remember, Tulsa did not shoot well. It's just to repeat the stat from yesterday. At the foul line, 19 of 36. Eight fouls for Tulsa. Seven for South Carolina. So both teams from here on out are going to be shooting free throws. Well, neither Indiana State or Tulsa could make a free throw in the semifinal battle yesterday. Frank Hayes' death is going to be tested. Swanigan just picked up his fourth foul. He, along with Burt, with four. Boy, tough day at the office for number 44. Swanigan in black for Tulsa. He comes out along with Harrison, and Kaichinis goes to the line. 17 of 24 coming in. He's one of two today. Free throw, no good. Nice save for Rashad Ray. Saves it to Kajon Brown. And here comes Tulsa with new personnel. Well, oh, that was a big play by Ray. Backdoor cut, Curtis. Woodard throws it right through the wickets of Curtis, who fouls notice going by. And they're going to say, on the ground, and the referee on the far side, Brian Kersey, is going to call it an intentional foul. You don't see that called a whole lot in college basketball without much egregious contact, but Brian Kersey is going to call it. That means free throws coming up in the ball for South Carolina, leading by six after this.
Kentucky Wildcats, Kevin. And Iowa State moves up to number four, but how about the performance by Denzel Valentine as the Sparties beat Kansas. Valentine with the triple-double. So the intentional foul, which leads the two shots in the ball. What do you think of this call on Mark Well, watch the right arm, kind of a rake across the chest. The spirit of the rule, that is going to be called an intentional. 57-50. South Carolina back on top by seven. And Dwayne Notice has it. Ball fake, drives it a hoop. Strong move for Notice. A great look off by Dwayne Notice. Frees the defender, then the blow by. Canada Junior National Team member as well for Dwayne Notice from Woodbridge, Ontario, Canada. Harrison back onto the floor for Frank Haith. Dribble weave of Curtis. Good defense from Sundarius Thornwell. Three on one, leaving it behind Notice, but nice trailer for Stroman for his first bucket of the game. Stroman is, always tends to be in the right place at the right time for South Carolina. Guerrero tried to take one. Instead, he's going to be called for a defensive foul. And two shots now for Tulsa. Well, first of all, that's tip loose by Thornwell, and Stroman comes in and picks up the loose change. Gets a pair. So Harrison to the free throw line, coming in 24 points, six rebounds, two assists per game average. 12 points, and it's been a hard-earned 12 points for Harrison. He scored eight of those 12 at the free throw line. Now at 1,107 points, he and Woodard, a couple of 1,000-point-plus scores. Woodard closing in on 1,500 for Tulsa. Well, Harrison has drawn so much attention on the ball screens where two defenders stay with him. The Gamecocks determined not to let Shaquille Harrison turn the corner. Notice Kaichinis, Cobb, Stroman. And Thornwell, the five for South Carolina. Under 11 minutes to go. Good steal for Rashad Ray. Ray, a blaze of speed up the near side to Harrison. Rashad Ray did not get the start today, but he has made some excellent defensive plays here in the second half. Woodard veering to the left behind interference from right. Ray slips it off to Harrison. Harrison around traffic, gets fouled. It's going to be on the ground, but nevertheless, it will be the 10th foul against South Carolina. So both teams for the final 10-33 in the double bonus. And now that's the fourth foul on Carrera. And if Carrera is limited, or make it on Cobb, I should say, and that's a limit of the depth for Frank Martin as Carrera also with fouls. And he's out of the game at the moment, as is Hakevich is as Frank Martin goes smaller in personnel. He goes with the freshman, Chris Silva, number 30. Harrison had come in as a great free throw shooter, under 59%, but doing very nicely. 10 of 11 at the line tonight. Now the stat that jumps out, Danny, is only five offensive rebounds by South Carolina. They came in averaging 18 offensive rebounds a game. Tulsa has been very focused on keeping those white jerseys off the glass. Yeah, Frank Martin talks about his K-State teams that led the nation in offensive rebounding in 2010, the Elite Eight team in 2011. This team off to a good start on that end as well. And on the other end, Thornwell and will lay it in. And he's now got 14 points. Well, Thornwell sneaks into the short corner. Teammate finds him. Right, trying on the trailer again. Kaichinis snaps up possession and feeds it out to Stroman across the midcourt stripe. Well, I'm impressed by Tulsa, the way they attack the offensive glass. It's not as physical as the Gamecocks. They have finesse guys that come in and go after those loose balls. Ten of the shot clock for Kaichinis. Puts it on the deck against Smith. Throws it off the shoe of Silva, stripped by Harrison, too. One on the clock and another shot clock violation on South Carolina. <laughs> that stare was meant for Chris Silva. Catch the basketball was the message, but you've got to like the defensive intensity by Tulsa. They're kind of hanging around here at that 9-10 point deficit. Tulsa has to make a move. Harrison will walk the ball up. The lead has been as high as 17 
for South Carolina. Tulsa has never led in this game. They were trailing 14 to two early and have been trying to rally ever since. Backdoor pass, Smith to right, and right travels. Well, Smith trying to work the interior of that zone. High, low look, right in traffic. That ball may have been tipped before he caught it, led to the travel. South Carolina, this is the fifth game in 10 days. They'll be off for a few days after this where they take on Lipscomb at home. Tulsa has Arkansas Little Rock coming up later this week. Nine point lead, the Paradise Jam final. Team two, four, no team, South Carolina and Tulsa. Spin in the lane, nice move for Silva, but defense even better by Rashawn Smith. Here's Harrison trying to put the moves on notice. Smith pulls up, hits the three-point shot. And Tulsa will use a timeout to try and seize the momentum with 8.39 to go. 63-57, but the Golden Hurricane on the move again here in the Paradise Jam Final. Stick with us. Many faces of Frank Martin. Yep. Always emphatic, always teaching, and always letting people know with that stare. <laughs> Since his days at K-State, we talked about when he was a student at Florida International University, a bouncer, had an offer to be hired as the bodyguard for an Egyptian prince turned it down, went into coaching, but his use of the skills he got bouncing to instill fear in his players and certainly get the message across. Great job from the guys in the truck well, to capture the face. Tough love and at K-State takes him to four NCAAs and one NIT in his five years there. And boy, he thinks this team's got a chance to get to the NCAA tournament also. Hey, Cosa, one of his most deep teams. You know, savvy teams and you remember those K-State teams Michael Beasley and Bill Walker the Elite Eight squad he had in Manhattan Miami guy through and through and certainly loving the weather in Columbia South Carolina especially he spent some time as we talked about earlier in Northeastern Boston winters are kind of cool from a guy from Miami the Harrison to the line for Tulsa now well, they had a tough situation in Columbia with that 19 inches of rain about a month ago when the yeah. team was going to start practice they went down to community service and helped out those unfortunates that were affected by that delusion of H2O that came through Columbia. And the team really bonded over that, really had a chance to help out the community. School was delayed for a little bit there. The campus itself, campus proper, is looking at more of a, a hill, so it wasn't as affected as the outlying areas in Columbia. 
And still in recovery mode from those floods. And the team uh, volunteered at the local Red Cross shelter, delivered water, among other things. Harrison now with 16 points, earned at the charity strike with eight minutes to go. Five point game. Marcus Stroman backing things out around the screen from Silva. Kaichinis on his way to the hoop, puts it up and draws the foul. Kaichinis, put your name on it, baby, own it. 65 58, Kaichinis into double figures, and South Carolina trying to hold off the Golden Hurricane. They lead by seven, under eight minutes to go. Limonis Hakevichis for a long stretch and Hakevichis the big scorer at 11 points but has not been seen in quite some time only oh, two rebounds halftime on him he had nine points scored inside early and often and Tulsa had heated up here in the second half shooting 64 percent from the field after just a dismal 31 percent in the first half DeAndre Wright diving to save that ball but it goes to South Carolina and here comes Stroman for the Gamecocks, up by eight points, trying to close this one out. Well, the stat that has kept this game close is South Carolina only two second-chance points. They make their living off offensive yeah. rebounds. Tulsa excelling at keeping Carolina off the glass. In fact, Tulsa's more offensive rebounds at this point. Kaichin is to the hoop with two on the shot clock. No. Silva goes over the top trying to grab the rebound against Harrison and he's going to be caught for the foul so they'll head of the other free throw line for free throws and, and going back to Hakevichis we've been talking with Frank Martin he's been big on Hakevichis who's coming back in on getting rebounds and certainly this is a situation in the game where you'd like to grab those rebounds and keep the other team off the glass and so far today he's got only two and Frank Martin talked about Hakevichis has gained weight it's helped his stamina yeah. it's allowed him to be more productive Excellent first half. Now he's going to come in with some fresh legs. The two seniors there, Carrera and Akevichis, about to enter the game. Yeah, Akevichis working on the lower body strength, making big dividends coming in, 16 points per game. But Frank Martin wants to see that rebounding number come up. Five rebounds per game coming in. You know, on the other end, his countryman Kaichin is trying to score it, but Silva going over the top and getting whistled for the foul is third. Well, and what... 
Tulsa is good at is their guards, Woodard and Harrison especially, are their leading rebounders. So as those big bodies are blocking out the attack by South Carolina, the guards can sneak in there and clean up the boards. Well, Shaq Harrison's going to get a very good lesson tonight after <laughs> free throw shooting. 12 for 14 at the line. This is his 15th try. He's got 12 of his 16 points from the line. He's only 2 of 7 from the floor. So as Carrera and Hakevich has come back in, notice and Silva check out for the game talks. League player of the week back to the stripe and a leading candidate for perhaps Paradise Jam MVP if Tulsa can pull this one out. Misses the second one as well. Boy, that's been an excellent opportunity to get this down to six, but Harrison leaves them both short. Kevich is back onto the floor on the perimeter, feeding it to Stroman. Nine on the clock for Thornwell. Puts it in off glass just a little long. And here comes Markel Curtis up the floor. Nice backdoor cut for Harrison. And Curtis dropping the dime. Harrison only two away from his fifth straight 20-point game to open the season. He had a stretch of five of those last season in December. And open up his campaign with that streak. Tipped away by Harrison, and it will stay with South Carolina on the right baseline. They're trying to go to Kytinis inside. He's got the mismatch on Harris. The last trip up, Hakevi just had it in the high post, didn't even look inside. Where Mendagas had excellent position. See if they continue to try to expose that mismatch. Thornwell gets it into Kytinis. Notice drives by Curtis. The floater with the right hand is good for two. Notice with nine points. Harrison and Woodard, the two scoring stalwarts for the Golden Hurricane. Curtis, Wright, and Burt, who's got those four fouls. The five for Tulsa. Five on the shot clock. Harrison runs into plenty of Gamecocks. Lobbed ahead. Thornwell to notice. And the whistle goes against Woodard to deny notice. Well, we've mentioned Dwayne knows a starter for 33 games last year for the Gamecocks. 33 of 33. He's taken the role of coming off the bench. Great experience. The tip ball. Number 10. Notice with the run out. Notice trying to bring this one back up to double figures. Six of nine at the line today. Came over the 12 and a half point per game average. And he has once again reached double figures. Five players for South Carolina and double figures for the second straight night. Led by Thornwell's 14. This team has one of their strength is the balance of the Gamecocks. And another tip ball, another deflection as they went to the zone. They plugged up the passing lanes. And it's got Harrison for Tulsa on the perimeter. They snuck him to the high post against the zone in the first half, but he's on the perimeter here against this on this attack here in the second half. Not as effective. Tulsa the turnover is the big story in the second half. 14 total for the game. Harrison grabs a rebound, leading the charge up the floor. I'll take it all the way. Well, that's what he does. Coast to coast, wire to wire, gets the rebound and explodes with the power dribble. Fifth straight 20-point game to open the season for Tulsa, but it's still an eight-point lead for South Carolina. Hakevich is stripped by Curtis. It will stay with the Gamecocks. And you see Tulsa, once that ball is bounced by Hekevich's, the second defender dives. That time Curtis is able to knock it out of bounds. Hekevich's has got to make a quick move or pass it back out. Notice the step back. Hekevich has thought about a three-pointer. Four on the shot clock again for Carolina. And a foul with two on the shot clock for the Gamecocks. And it will cost DeAndre Wright Underneath the hoop.
Boy, excellent defense throughout that shot clock, and then right with the foul, it's thrown well at the line. And we talked about Sendarius Thornwell. He has a quiet 15 points for the Gamecocks. Got to the free throw line. Knocked in those early three-pointers. Perfect five of five at the line here today for the junior from Lancaster, South Carolina. Came in 12 points, six and a half rebounds, four and a half assists per game. Doing a little bit of everything. Yesterday had six assists, no turnovers. One of the big stats for South Carolina is tip balls and deflections. And with the length of Thornwell on this zone, you see Carrera at the top take up some space. Danny Lee, Kevin Lehman, Monica Jonigan, Paradise Jam final. And Brandon Swanigan off the bench having to be very careful with his foul situation, but able to knock down the jump hook off the baseline runner. Four minutes to go. And it's still a South Carolina lead for, by eight points. Lob inside, Kevin just can't finish, and Swanigan grabs the rebound. Well, that was excellent offense, except for the finish, which did not happen. Oh, Carrera goes flying over the top of Woodard, and two free throws will be coming for Tulsa, looking to cut further into the lead. Time beginning to run out the sand. They're running out of the hourglass in Paradise. Eight points separating these two, and a Paradise Jam title hangs in the balance. Half, Kevin, after only 31% shooting in the first half, 67% here in the second. And been able to get some transition baskets. Woodard and Harrison with their team speed in the open court. And again, South Carolina with only two second chance points. And Frank Martin told us in the lobby, that's our identity. That's our character. We're going to crash the glass. We're going to score on offensive rebounds. Tulsa's front line has held off. South Carolina's big men and allowed the Tulsa guards to go in there and clean up loose ball rebounds. Harrison and Woodard at 33 points, half of Tulsa's production. Meanwhile, South Carolina with five players in double figure, as mentioned, just like they did yesterday in the victory over Hofstra to get to the championship game. Notice the feed inside. Hakevich is over Swanigan. Swanigan, a man on an island there. Hakevich is with the jump hook. Woodard from the corner, it's long. Thornwell grabs the rebound. And 
South Carolina in no hurry with just three minutes to go trying to join Alabama 06 and Arkansas 04 as the other SEC teams to win the Paradise Jam. Kevin just really wants the ball inside. He came down court, he looked at Frank Martin, and he called that same play again, which is going to be a high-low iso as he's got Swanigan on his back, and now Swanigan takes a seat on the bench. Tough night for number 44. Brandon fouls out, having scored four points, grabbing a couple of rebounds. That was all Hakevich's. He crossed midcourt. He wanted the ball in his hands. Hakevich is to the line, came into the today, 12 of 19 at the line. Knocks down his first free throw. He has 14 points, second behind Thornwell. Notice Carrera and Kaichin is each with 11. Carrera out and P.J. Dozier who's sitting at eight. Next bucket for him makes six players in double figures. And the big man from Lithuania with 15. Ten point lead, late stages of this game. They continue to keep Tulsa at bay. Then Hakevic just entered the game as commanded in the post, the man of the basketball. Head fake Woodard to the cup, puts it in and draws the foul. And that's just what Tulsa needed. I tell you, Woodard and Shaquille Harrison can get to the rim. That first step is so explosive by both of those players. Preseason all-conference first team for Woodard. 14 and a half points per game. Has led Tulsa in scoring all three years he's been on campus. But oh. this year, such a great season so far by Harrison. This is a Tulsa team that won 23 games last year and returns 90% of everything. Points, rebounds, assists. They finished in the second round of the NIT. They returned 98.5% of their points, 97% of their minutes. Only Valparaiso with 99% and 98% respectively returned more. They finished second in the American era, played SMU, the last game of the year for the conference championship. Five in the shot clock. Dozier a step inside the arc. Off the front rim, right skies for the rebound. That's his sixth rebound. Here's Harrison, the outlet to Curtis. Drives it a hoop around Hakevich. Just, oh, what a move for Curtis. He has 11. And Curtis with a huge lift. We talk about the bench production of Tulsa. Curtis a big part. And a timeout called by South Carolina, or else Curtis might have had the steal. And Frank Martin, once again, trying to counsel the team. A minute 42 to go. Paradise Jam final. Stay with us right after this. The waiting moments are coming up next.
MVP of the Paradise Jam. South Carolina, 83-75 to go to 5-0 and for the first time in 11 years. Frank Martin's team triumphant in Paradise. Back to wrap it up after this.